How's it going everyone? It's your boy Dak908 aka the Dig Dug himself and today this video is going to be a little different. This is a video that someone asked me to do a while ago and I've kind of been putting off and then someone asked me again to do it and I was like well maybe I should actually really go ahead and do this but I'm going to talk to you guys about the Lance. Now I know it's late into the game. Uh, this game has been out for a while and everyone has probably already picked up the preferred weapons or what have you And I probably should have done this video a lot sooner, but I just kind of I, I guess I, I really wasn't feeling it at the time, but I'm going to talk to you guys about what makes the lance the perfect weapon for me and how it actually works Or how it works pretty well in Monster Hunter Generations now There's a lot of things about the lance that has changed in this game um, with the introduction of the styles I will say that it's not the same lens that I've known and loved forever but there 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 are benefits to all the styles and truth be told I will admit I am I'm biased when it comes to styles the only lance I actually use is the striker style simply because striker lance is the only lancing style that allows you to actually I guess you could just say mimic the lancing abilities of the lance that's that we've all been using for about 10 years now you know, since the Lance's inception, it's worked technically one way. You had vertical thrust, you had horizontal thrust, uh, you had a back hop, you had side hops. I believe the counter was implemented, implemented a little bit later, excuse me. Uh, but that was the way of the Lance. And truth be told, the way in which it actually dealt its damage was, was paramount. It was simple. You know, you didn't have uh, wild, lavish, flashy attacks, no weird patterns or anything like that. You can actually focus with precision on a particular monster part or a particular you know side of the monster just what have you and then that's that's what that's what made it a weapon that I actually really like it's quite precise I mean uh, a lot of weapons who use let's say skills like weakness exploit where it takes advantage of actually hitting a monster in this weak spot you see those weapons on like great sword and maybe like hammer weapons like that that do um, very slow but very strong single strikes that's cool and everything, and normally the weapons who are more flashy, like long sword, sword and shield, they don't necessarily do that because they just get the hits in when they can. Well, the lance, I want to put in the the latter camp. Well, excuse me, the former camp because you can actually, even though it attacks quicker than that of a, a great sword or a hammer, you can also use weakness exploit on the lance because it's precision strikes. But we're, we'll talk about the skills a little bit a little bit later. Let's talk about the arts and uh, styles, how it's actually changed the lance. Now. The guild style that uh, has been introduced in this game is supposed to be the same style that we've all been using for forever. And for most weapons that's actually the case, but the lance is not. When I first started playing Monster Hunter Cross, and it was in Japanese, I didn't know how to actually change the names, well not the name, excuse me, the uh, styles and whatnot. When they gave me that, that final thrust with the, for the remainder of the video I'm just going to call it the, the three poke thrust. When they gave me the three poke thrust uh, at the end, the ender. Let's just call it the Ender. When they gave me that new Ender, I was very indifferent because there's there's good and bad to it. The good part is that well, it's three hits. That's you do one, you do one thrust, two thrust, and then you have an exceedingly longer wind up for that 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 final thrust. Excuse me, but you get three hits out of it if all three hits land. That's cool in some aspects for for like. Paralysis, sleep, poison, that that can actually be a good thing. But I'm not necessarily a lancer who actually use those uh, type of lances, but we will talk about the best of all those lances in a minute. Uh, so when they did that new ender, I really wasn't feeling it. But you can still get away with it because a lot of the other things to it is totally the same. All the other things for the lance is totally there. They just changed the ender. Now, when they... When I was able to figure out what was what, and I moved to striker style. Striker style is the lance that we've been using for forever okay the only difference is that when you press x and x and a together you don't get that uh that sweeping attack that the lance would do then again it was kind of a, a useless attack people like to use the attack when like knocking away jaggy or other small annoying monsters who would like get in the way but for the most part in terms of actually using it to fend off actual monster to beat him to capture him what have you it works as it's supposed to so for tried and true lances like myself you're probably going to stick to the striker style simply because it is the style that you're probably more comfortable with and used to by now now the area style is a really unique style in my honest opinion if it's to be you know taken with you know any type of um clout is that the aerial style is the only lancing style where in which you don't really need to have a lancing set 
because most of it is actually going to be you uh, vulting off a monster's back and then thrusting and you're getting your three poke in it's fine it's actually the only set I don't even run guard with it's the only one I don't run guard with because I'm too busy either cheating my weapon finding a good opening to do my vault and then doing the attack I mean you can actually it's the one time you could use the lance as if you would like a, a like some dual blades or something like that go for the the, the the multiple strikes because when you every time you thrust you get the new ender uh, thrust so you get the one two three thrust that, 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 that triple hit you know what I mean so it's really great for you know monsters who have um, low weaknesses to elements or low weaknesses to ailments like paralysis or poison is really good for that kind of thing like I like to use I like to use it when I'm fighting monsters like uh, Kush because Kush like stay in the air so I like to get up in the air with Kush Alatron I use it fighting Alatron a really big monsters don't move uh, move a lot like a Cantor or Yukonlos I like using it with them as well so the aerial style is the style you can actually just use if you want to use a lance but like Ariel and still want to move around like er like everyone else. It's the one you don't have to play the, the tank role, so to speak. Now, speaking of the tank role, we're going to round off onto the Adept Art... Excuse me, not the Adept Art, the Adept Hunting Style for the Lance. Now, this is the one hunting style that a lot of people recommended to me, but I still turned down. And I'm going to explain to you. The Lance has a counter attack, okay, where you would press R and A together and you will throw your uh, your shield kind of forward but your Lance arm backwards and then you'll build energy for powerful thrust. Thing is, you can do this whenever you want. Sure, the thrust itself is only, like at full charge, only as strong as your strongest hitting normal. It's actually, it looks like it's charging but it's really not really charging for any real actual damage. But you have a counter nonetheless. You can... You, you'll be mid uh, attack string, see a monster about to wind up an attack, set your counter, and then counter attack after you know the monster hits your shield, and you, you're totally fine. The adept takes that to a whole new level. Sure, you do lose your ability to actually counter with the adept lance, you can't just counter for free. What you do instead is you press the R button to pull your guard up. And if you do it at the precise time in which a monster would hit you, you have a new counter. Now this counter is powerful, but it's only if you're really, really precise. If you're not the most patient person, if you don't have the best uh, timing, things like that, Adept Style is going to be the biggest waste of your time, okay? I understand that it can be good for certain, for certain monsters and certain fights and things like that, but the animation after the counter is much longer for my personal preference. Also, um, the timing in which to get it down is relatively strict. Not too, too strict, but it's kind of strict. It, it's it's kind of tricky. So, the only time I really like using the Adept style with a lance itself is the gun lance. Because the gun lance itself has no counter. So, when you take something that was inherently very easy and then make it a lot harder. But sure, you add a little benefit to it. But you lose the versatility and you lose uh, a couple of the small things that actually get uh, priority. You lose the priority of it. It kind of makes it, in my opinion, not worth it. So in my honest opinion, if you're thinking styles for a lance, if you're trying to pick up a lance or whatever, just stick to striker, okay? The other ones have things going on for them. Yes, they have pluses. Yes, they have cons. But the striker is the most balanced, most all grounded. And there's really no con to the striker style. It's the lance we've all known and love. It has literally no ill effects to it. It even builds your hunter arts uh, quicker, so why not just go with striker? You can totally like dance around and use the other styles if you want to, but that's just not what I would do personally. But speaking of the arts, I like to keep my arts very simple. Now I was told that told by many people that Gajin Hunter recommended the the he called it super evasion lancing or something like that. I have never seen a Gajin Hunter video. Don't bash me for it. I just don't I mean I don't really need to, but he either created or came up with the the, the the way of using absolute evasion, absolute readiness, and I think, um, I don't know, I think the third skill is up to you, it, it probably had in Rage Guard on there, and using it as a means to stay mobile, completely stay out of harm's way, and lance. And truth be told, it's actually not a bad idea. I mean, it's not. It's it's really cool. Some people even throw on evasion too on uh, on a set and do that. So that way they're completely invulnerable to like everything. And with the fact that they can probably squeeze and compose, they're able to get their abilities, excuse me, their arts 
quickler, quickler, quickly, and quicker. <laughs> So, I mean, you can totally do that. It's, it's, that's fine. That is totally fine. But the way I do it, I do absolute evasion, corkscrew jab, and enraged guard. At the end of the day, no matter what's happening, I'm going to run enraged guard because it gives the lance a huge boost of attack. But I like running absolute evasion, corkscrew jab, and enraged guard simply because absolute evasion gives me out of harm's way when I really need to be out of harm's way. Uh, the corkscrew jab gives me, and this is, this is kind of a, a personal thing, a lot of times lances get tripped up by every every other weapon out there okay if you're a lance user you've been tripped by by everyone most notably longsword users the court screw jab kind of gives us back the ability to actually trip up the other your other teammates if you want to be that guy but if you're not trying to be that guy it is a multi-hitting attack that hits very hard and it's it's a great way to actually do a lot of damage to a monster if you just so happen to land the hit so i like it especially for cutting tails or for that last ditch effort attack in hopes that this final attack completes you know your quest by killing the monster now enraged guard is a staple you do not pick lance without picking enraged guard simply because yes the lance has very linear forms of attack and it's not necessarily attack heavy more so is a dps but enraged guard gives you phenomenal attack if you actually use it to its full potential while having that great dps you can get an enraged guard. you can in if you get a full powered enraged guard your attack will probably increase by a hundred points or so so totally run it um, a lot of people actually found ways to maximize the efficiency of Enrage Guard by using a, a large bomb plus, poking it with the, you know, just like any poke from a lance, and then immediately using the Enrage Guard afterwards, and so that way they can get the maximum effect off of it. One way that I found is actually really useful to do this as well, is to actually uh, do the Enrage Guard when a monster is roaring. Now, most monsters have pretty decent sized roars. Not like the little bitty wimpy roars, but you know, roars like Wraithy and Rathalos. If you get a guard off of that, you're at full power. It's it's kind of useful. So if you're struggling trying to find a perfect time for the monster to actually hit you, so that way you can get your rage guard, try and go off for of their roars. But that's that. Now, I know we rambled on for a long, a long bit about just how I feel about you know the lancing styles and everything. So what I want to wrap this video on is briefly going over, in my opinion, some of the better weapons to actually use for the lance by means of element. Now, I will give you guys more and more and more info on how I would actually like to use, the, how I would use Lance, rather, if you guys would like to, to know. But this video, I just decided to dedicate towards the styles, the arts, and maybe some Lancing, or some standard Lance weapons, if uh, what have you. So if you guys really want to see more of that, I will totally make another video about that. Or if you want me to give insight on a different video, a different weapon, you know, uh, let me know. But with that being said, move over to the lances that I would totally recommend to have. Coming from low rank all the way up to, you know, high rank, mid tier, low tiers and whatnot. But starting off the top, when it comes to fire lances, there aren't very many fire lances for uh, the, for like the, the low rank kind of guy to use. So truth be told, you're just gonna go with whatever you can get a hold to because the lance, the, the fire lance don't really come in up until around like Rathalos, you know what I mean? Um, but when you do get there, I would totally recommend the Rathalos uh, path of lancing. You can also go with uh, Glavinus, he's good as well. Um, either one of these two are, are great, but when you do, if you do decide to go with the uh, Rathalos side of things, you have two choices. You can either go high attack or high element. Personally, I went with high attack because most times you can get away with that and I had the Glavinus one for or the Glavinus one for the element because it's a little bit more element that have the Rathalos, but it's it's up to you. But moving over to water. For water, I only have one water lance. I lie. I have two other water lances, but that's the Royal Ludroth and the Ketchawacha. And I have both of those lances simply for blunt sets because they have high attack and high green sharpness but for standard use i totally recommend the noble snarf for water lance it is a new lance in that has been done what well, has been released i guess or shown off for the first time in this game it's a great lance it has great attack uh great water it even has a plus benefit to defense so it's, it's a great lance to actually have i is my favorite lance in the game okay when as soon as i was able to get this lance i made it okay i should I strongly recommend this lance if you're gonna go with some water stuff but if you want like mad attack, you can totally go with Plesioth because Plesioth has high attack, high element, but it has a negative, I think negative 15 on the affinity. So that, that's see if you want it. Uh, moving over to Thunder, early on, you can probably get some Karen stuff or maybe even squeeze out some some Zenogre, uh lances. But my, my strongest opinion, guys, is to either go with Astalos or Ligaiacris. 
Me personally, I am more Legiagris than I am Astalos. The only time I will switch to Astalos is if a monster is susceptible to more, uh, the, more of the thunder, but the Legiagris has the 220 attack lands with the things like 20 element is not too bad, but it's, it's a good middle ground. You know what I mean? But Astalos does have white sharpness and um, a, plus affinity, a plus effect with affinity. So you could run Kirin if you want mad element. Uh, Zenogre, Thunderlord Zenogre also has mad element as well, but personally, for the beginning of the game, probably run Kirin if you like, or Zenogre if you like, but I, I would recommend running Endgame, Astalos, or uh, Legiacris. But if you want like a lot of element, you can probably go Kirin, but personally, the best all around, Astalos. Real talk, attack's not that bad, the element is really good, plus effective affinity, and natural white, so think about that. Now, dragon, dragons, but dragon's kind of weird because not a lot of enemies, excuse me, not a lot of monsters are really weak to dragon. But those who, those of which who are, you do kind of want to go in there with a the dragon weapon. But honestly, the dragon weapons you should probably look out for is the Gormagala one. Uh, either of the Gormagala dragon weapons are really good for, uh, excuse me, lances because they have the attack isn't the greatest, but the element is high and it has really good affinity. But if you don't want to go gore, you can totally go Alatron. I mean. Alatron is, is a no-brainer. I don't want to think and I want a dragon weapon weapon that has the highest natural white sharpness in the game I think and its element is in not nothing to, to shy to, nothing to shy from with 128 on, Excuse me 180 on the attack and 28 on the dragon not that bad for a dragon uh, Lance if you ask me Now for ice ice is a bit wishy-washy because honestly not a lot of monsters are very susceptible to ice but um, early on totally just go with gamut. I mean the earliest ice weapons aren't very good honestly I would totally recommend you probably finding another weapon to go with if you want ice but for the lance the the best ice weapons you're probably gonna get is the gamut or the kush they are now I use more kush than I do gamut because a lot of times when a monster is susceptible to ice it's more element than it is raw attack so I'll go with kush who has the higher raw element but the Gamoth has really high attack as well. At 230, that's nothing to scoff at either. So run either of those. You could possibly get away with some Zamtrio stuff, but Zamtrio, his weapons are kind of hard to make, and it really, like, it's just not all that good personally. But it's, it's up in the air. Now, Poison, I have one Poison Lance. The other Poison Lances, I mean, you could run them, like any of them, they're good, but the only one I really like running is the the depth of serpent blade it is actually kind of hard to acquire because it requires a lot of remorba remorba those um th those weird little flying things that spit poison at you it it's that it's that lance i recommend that one because it has 190 on the attack and 40 poison there's only few weapons that have that much poison i'm probably looking at the deviant uh Toxic Queen, Toxic Queen, or Dread Queen, excuse me, Dread Queen Raytheon. If you don't want to, like, grind that out, I would totally recommend this one. Now, the blue isn't all that good, but if you have a blunt set, I would totally recommend running that blunt set with this Poison Lance, because it's actually really good. It's the one that I use the most, honestly. Now, when it comes to Paralysis, Dark Lance, or the Vault, the Volvodon uh, Lance, I forget what it's called, but the Dark Lance is a... Hornitar Lance. You have to like fight insects to get it. It's very monotonous, but it actually has, has a very good amount of natural white sharpness. The attack's only 150, but the paralysis is really, really good too. I think it's like 28 or something like that. I would recommend that one, but it's going to take a lot of work and effort to actually get done or to get made because it's 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 kind of hard to acquire because of the, you know, the monotony of actually fighting insects. But if you do have a set with sharpness plus two, I would recommend the Volvanon Lance over the, um, the Dark Lance, simply because uh, once you get the Sharpness Plus 2 modified added to that Voltron Lance, the White Sharpness is about as much as the Dark Lance, and the attack is actually 30 points higher, so uh, that, that's a thing. Now, Sleep plus the Off, and that's it. There, there is really, sleep is the weakest ailment in this game. It has taken a huge nerf. There's no reason to run Sleep, okay? But if you must run Sleep on the Lance, just run the Plus the Off Sleep Lance. I think 160 on attack and like 44 sleep or something like that. It's really, it's really good. No other, I think 26 actually, but no other sleep lance is really that good. Now for blast, this one is kind of, I'm gonna give you the best blast lance. The best blast lance is Hellblade. Um, sorry if you probably wanted an easier to get lance, but that's honestly it. Hellblade is the best, but if you are really itching for it, the blimp lance is actually not all that bad. 
Sure, the sharpness isn't the greatest, but if you do run blunt, then it's not that bad for you either. And it has like 200 attack with, I think, 20 blasts, something like that. Now, the Teostra is also available to have, but it attacks like 150, with, like 40 blasts or something like that. I understand blasts is the kind of thing that you want to put lots and lots and lots on, but with 150 attack on a lance, you're not really doing that much damage, especially when your sharpness multiplier is only at blue naturally. So, Hellblade has the advantage with having a natural white sharpness and um, the attack of being about 200 I believe and like 25 blasts and a, a plus effect to affinity and the extra added effect of being a deviant weapon and allowing you to fill your Hunter Arts gauge quicker so that's that but that's all I have for you guys right now in terms of you know this Lance video I guess people ask me about it and so I decided to make it but if you want me to see if you want to see me do an even more in-depth video on the lance, I can do that as well with probably a whole lot more uh, different, um, what is it, um, examples and tips and tricks on how to do it, but this is this is how I feel on the lance, okay? This is a video of pretty much how I feel on the lance. I don't know how well this video do. It was honestly just me rambling, real talk. Like, just I was just talking to you guys straight up, so it's kind of weird. But if you want to see more of this, of this kind of thing, I will probably do a better job when I do the follow-up video to this or maybe other weapons but I'm not a, I'm not a master of other weapons I only really know the lance and the gun lance the other weapons I'm not too too fond uh, for but I will do my best if you guys want me to do something like that but with that being said boys and girls Douglas and Diggettes it's been your boy I will talk to you all next time with that being said take care